they were like, yes, the law is everything, and they forgot what the heart of God is really all about. And this is where, where Jesus addresses them. Even Paul, he speaks about, he was a Pharisee, and he says, we demanded the strictest obedience to the Jewish law. So they were even strict, stricter than the, um, the Sadducees. So, so there was the, with the fractures of different leaders um, in that time. And Jesus came just at the right time. And he came and he fulfilled scripture. And he's talking to these Pharisees and he's addressing them. And you guys can imagine how angry they got. In scripture, they got so angry that they want to kill him. And they did. And they, they swept up people and they, they killed Jesus because they were so angry with him. And something that I also want to mention in that time, because the Israelites um, um, and the, uh, the nation were waiting for the Messiah, you would sometimes get this one guy just popping up and saying, I'm the Messiah. And then the Pharisees would go to that guy and say, are you really the Messiah? And they would ask him and they would, they would examine him and, uh, and then they will find out that he's not the Messiah. And so Jesus came up. But Jesus says, I'm the Son of God. But he didn't only say it, he proved it. He, he was loving and he, he opened up blind eyes and uh, deaf ears and he, he let the, uh, uh, the lame walk and he raised the dead uh, out of the grave. So Jesus didn't only come with the word of God, but he came with the power of God. And the Pharisees was just looking at this picture. They are waiting for a king that is strong and that will suppress this Roman empire and he will lead their people. But Jesus came with a spiritual power. He came, he didn't come with, 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 with weapons, but he came with the power of God. And, and those who were in, in, um, uh, in relationship with Jesus knew that Yo, something is different about this, this person. Other religions see Jesus only as the prophet, but Jesus is the Son of God. He is amazing and He's awesome. So if we read his, um, John 10 verse 1 to 5, so now we've got a little bit of background, so let's tackle the scripture. And it says, um, John 10 verse 1, I tell you the truth, Jesus speaking, anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheep, um, sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. The gatekeeper opens uh, the gate for him and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his flock, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him, because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him, because they don't know his voice. So Jesus is making a statement here, um, and the people don't understand what he's saying. Um, so from verse 7, Jesus starts to explain it to them. He says, um, so he explained it to them. I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. I just want to stop there. We need to um, be sure in our hearts that Jesus is the gate. Um, early in my, my Christian walk, I thought that all roads led to heaven. And that's such a lie. Jesus says that He is the gate. There's no, not all roads lead to heaven. The only way to the Father is through Jesus. And Jesus says um, in John 16, John 14, He says, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. So now you can imagine how, how uh, angry these Pharisees got. But the other people are saying, like, Yo, Jesus, you're right. You, we can see that you're the Son of God. You're doing all these things. So there's this dichotomy of, of opinions and people wondering what's going on. What I like about Jesus, He tells them that I'm the gate. He doesn't ask for the Pharisees' permission. Can I be, can I be the Messiah now? Is, is everything all right? He makes a statement and he's saying, guys, I am the Son of God and I am the gate. And he doesn't worry about the opinions of other people or their recognition. Jesus is the gate. Jesus is the way, he's the truth, he's the life. Jesus is the light. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the king, he's the ruler. Jesus is Lord. If, we, if people do not accept Jesus as Lord, that doesn't make him less Lord. He's still Lord. It doesn't make Him less Lord. So whether we accept Him as Lord and Savior or not, he, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is the King and He's the Lord. Then we read on to uh, verse 8. 
All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. And the Amplified says, um, All who came before me as false messiahs and self-appointed leaders, often these, these uh, religious leaders are self-appointed, they are not appointed by God. They think they are doing the, the good things, but they are, the, they are um, unfaithful shepherds. And Jesus says, Are thieves and robbers. These guys are thieves and robbers. But the true sheep did not hear them. So when people can, can connect in their hearts, they go, something isn't right. Okay, John 10 verse 9. Yes, I am the gate. Jesus says that a second time. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. So Jesus is saying, those who come to me, you will not be in this tight, stiff building. You may not make a noise. If you walk into a church, you may not squeak, you may not make a noise. That is religion, guys. That is, that is killing what God is doing. Jesus is saying, I've got a spacious place for you. I'm opening up the gate for you. And, and, and the guys are free. And Jesus says, it is for freedom that Christ came to set us free. We do not have to be in bondage and think, Yes, this is the only way that I need to worship God. And, and I'm so afraid I'm, I'm doing things wrong. That is religion. Religion is a camp. And only a few sheep are in there and they, they are forced feed. When Jesus opens up the gate, we've got this sheep that has free range. What do you call it? Free range. They can go wherever they like. But this is not in terms of sin. This is in terms of our relationship with Jesus. We can sing. We can dance. We can tell people about Jesus. We can have dinner and we can talk about Jesus. I don't know if you guys know, but before you got saved, when you hear the voice of Jesus, it, oh, the voice, the, the name of Jesus, it's almost like, no, 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 don't say Jesus too loud in this house. I believe in God, but don't say Jesus. Um, we're going to talk about that at Sunday at church. We're not going to talk about Jesus in the house. And that is what religion does. It, it keeps us bound. But Jesus wants us to celebrate Him and enjoy Him. And it says there in uh, John 10 verse 10, we know the scriptures so well. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. So we see here that whenever God does a work and He is he's breathing His life into people, the enemy wants to come and suppress that with religion. And the enemy wants to kill, steal and destroy that spiritual input that God is giving in people's lives. But we also see that the enemy is, is um, scattering families and he bring, is trying to bring division in the church. He really wants to scatter God's sheep um, from one another. And we need to be aware that the enemy, that, that is the enemy's tactic. When you, whenever you find that your family was in, in unity, there was love, and sudden, suddenly there's just the shift where there's that division. Know that the enemy is trying to steal, kill, and destroy in the family. Trying to kill, steal, and destroy in the church perhaps in your business. So we need to be aware that the enemy doesn't want God's life in that house, in that business, in the church. He wants to scatter. He wants to destroy. But Jesus says, my purpose is to give my people um, a satisfying life. And Jesus didn't die on the cross and pay the price so that we can have this comfortable, luxurious life that we can just enjoy life so much. Jesus came to give us um, satisfying and, and abundant life with Him forever and ever. I'm so reminded of Terence's preach last week, and he said we've got to run about 70 years that we've got on this earth. The rest is eternal with Jesus. So how do we live the 70 years with Jesus on earth? Good. Isaiah 40 verse 11. Isaiah 40 verse 11. If we can get that one up. This is a, proph this is a prophecy, and it's, uh, it's pointing to Jesus, and it says, He will feed His flock like a shepherd, he will carry the lambs in his arms, holding them close to his heart. See, Jesus isn't distant. He doesn't want us to sit there and look good and be self-righteous. Jesus brings us close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep with their young. John 10, we're reading on verse 11. I am the good shepherd. And Jesus is making this statement. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. I just want to stop there. 
we all can agree that a sheep is utterly defenseless, right? He doesn't have claws and teeth. Can you imagine a sheep defending himself with, you know? In anyway, but um, we know that the sheep are utterly defenseless. And nowadays we've got um, fences and we've got alarms and we've got um, we've got all things in place to protect the sheep. But those days they only had a shepherd. And Jesus is using this illustration. But for sheep, you had a constant. You had you need to have a constant eye on the sheep all the time. When there was uh, storms coming, the shepherd had to lead them quickly out of maybe flash flash floods. Um, storms um, from uh, prey and from thieves and um, the shepherd often had to put his life on the uh, on the line to protect his sheep and Jesus placed his life on the line to save us Jesus the king of kings the lord of all died on the cross spotless lamb so that we could be saved he knew and and that was the the plan he that we cannot save ourselves through the righteous works. Jesus says, or the, the, the Bible says that our good works is like filthy rags before the Lord. If you want to find out how good you are, just at the end of the day, just, just think of the things that you did wrong. And then you become, uh, uh, realize that, yo, I'm far from perfect. But Jesus doesn't want us to focus on the sin anymore. He wants us to remind us that, yo, my blood is sufficient for each and every one. And then um, further on, a hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming. He will abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him and he isn't the sh uh, shepherd. And so the wolf attacks them and scatters the flock. The hired hand runs away because he's working only for the money and doesn't really care about the sheep. For a hired hand, someone that is hired, if there's danger, he runs away. He, do, he doesn't want to put his, his life on the line. He just want to protect them and get his money and get, get out of here. But Jesus, for him, his flock is so valuable to him that he has put his life on the line. And he's saying that he's loving his sheep so much. Ezekiel 34, verse 11. So this whole uh, John 10, where we spoke about Hanukkah and the uh, priests that are reflecting on, are they still on track? They normally use this scripture, Ezekiel 34, and they use other scriptures, I think Jeremiah 25, so that in this time they go through these scriptures and meditate on them. So when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, immediately they, the antennas go up and they think of this scripture because that is the season that they are in. And Ezekiel 34 says, um, for this is what the sovereign Lord says, I myself will search and find my sheep. And that time the, the, the Israelites were scattered. But Jesus came and found them and searched for them. I will be like a shepherd looking for his uh, scattered flock. I will find my sheep and rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on that dark and cloudy day. The next one, I think it's verse 16. Yes, I will search for my lost ones who strayed away and I will bring them safely home again. I will bandage the injured. I will bandage the injured and strengthen the weak. If we think what Jesus did, this is exactly what he did. The Pharisees didn't see that. They missed it. They were so focused on, on being so pious and self-righteous that they didn't see the power of God. Good, next one. So this is going on and God uh, says in verse 16 to 21, I think. I'm not going to read everything. But God is warning the, these powerful people in Israel that are suppressing his people and often it's priests and religious leaders who suppress God's people. They just want things for themselves and they don't care about God, God's people um, and they're not faithful shepherds. So God says, But I will destroy those who are fat and powerful. I will feed them, yes, feed them justice. Isn't it enough for you to keep the best of the pastures for yourself? Must you also trample down the rest? Is it enough for you to drink clear water for yourselves? Must you also muddy the rest with your feet? Why must my flock eat what you have trampled down? And drink water you have fouled. Next one. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I will surely judge between the sheep and the scrawny sheep. And this is where Jesus comes and fulfills the prophecy. Just before I speak, just the next one. And then this, this whole um, piece in Ezekiel. You've got this God promises something and then he addresses 
the guy and then he promises something again and this is where the prophecy of Jesus comes in and it says so I will rescue my flock um, and they will no longer be abused I will judge between one animal of the flock and another and I will set over them one shepherd my shepherd David who came from the line of David Jesus did so there's the promise he will feed them and be a shepherd to them and I the Lord will be their God and my servant David will be a prince among my people I the Lord have spoken and here we see Jesus with the Pharisees and he's standing on the word and the promise that God gave gave the Israelites he is here to gather his sheep and to sort out these um, religious leaders can you imagine how offended those Pharisees must be to know that they are the the, the bad she- uh, shepherd yeah um, so Jesus in, in Matthew 23, we know in the, Old Te- uh, in the New Testament, um, Jesus starts to confront the, the Pharisees and he looks at them and he sees the hypocrisy. Hypocr- hypocr- <laughs> I got a word to go and that's But anyway, they were, they were hypocrites. And Jesus saw that. And he says to them in Matthew 23, you crush people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to help. So this is this law. God has given the law so they can re- live righteously. But they have taken it so far that they are suppressing God's people. And they themselves do not live the law out. When they are at home, they are not, they are not living according to God's will and His word. Okay, and then John 10 verse 14. Jesus again says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. Just as my Father knows me, and I know the Father. So Jesus is saying to them, there's an intimate relationship between me and the Father. So so I've sacrificed my life for the sheep. I have other sheep too that are not in the sheepfold. So uh, Jesus says, I must bring them in as well. So Jesus here is referring to the Gentiles. So he's speaking to the Jews. He first went to the Jews to save the Jews. But his heart is for the whole world to come to him. And he's telling them, hey, there's other guys that need to be reached as well. And Jesus says, they will listen to my voice and there will be one flock with one shepherd. One flock with one shepherd. And it made me think of Matthew 25 where Jesus is saying, the Son of Man will sit on his throne and the angels will be around him. And he says, all the nations of the world will be in front of him. And the scripture says, like a shepherd, he will separate the people from the sheep from the goats the sheep are the one who accepted jesus as lord and savior and who listened to his voice and the goats are those who do not want to do anything with jesus and uh, jesus says here in matthew 25 i didn't put the scripture up but uh, it says then the king will say to those on the right come you who are blessed by my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you oh, what a um, glorious day we're going to be with jesus in his kingdom um, for I was hungry and you fed me I was thirsty and you gave me a drink I was a stranger and you invited me into your home I was naked and you gave me clothing I was sick and you cared for me I was in prison and you visited me I just want to take the scripture where Jesus separates and this is such a reality guys if we are not born again John 3 verse 3 says you need to be born again you cannot see the kingdom of God if you are not born again and you cannot enter the kingdom of God when you're not born again. Jesus says what born again means is when G- Jesus says you will have eternal life when you believe in me, the Son of God. And when I come and live in your heart, um, you will be my sh- part of my flock. You will be my sheep. And there's this immediate separation of those who are part of Jesus and those who are not part of Jesus, the goats. Friends, if we do not want to be with Jesus on this earth, we will not want to be with him in eternity. We need to make the decision here on earth. Are we going to follow Jesus or are we going to follow the world? And as sheep, we listen to Jesus' voice, but we wander off a bit. But our shepherd is so gracious that he calls our name and he brings us in again. Regarding salvation, if you've never heard the shepherd vo- shepherd's voice this morning where Jesus has called you and he's knocked on the door and said, Here I am. Are you willing to follow me? This is the time to say, Lord, I want to follow you with everything in me. I want to listen to your voice. Jesus is calling. I'm just going to call a name. Mariki. And Mariki answers, Yes, Lord, here I am. Come and follow me. 
Lord, I don't think so. Or yes, Lord, I will follow you. I'm going to lay everything down for you and your kingdom. I want to follow you, Lord. And those who say, Lord, not now. I've got too much things to do. I don't want to be part of your kingdom yet, just yet. The day comes when the king will sit on his throne and he will separate people. And, those, and scripture says in Matthew 25, verse 46, and the goats, they will go into a place of eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. What an amazing picture. We see this. The shepherd heart of God is so in love with his people. He's got a heart for them. He's got mercy. He's got grace. But there comes a day when he says, the time is up. You had your time. This is, this is, this is a reality. God is, is full of love and compassion, but he's also just. He's not fair. He's just. And he's righteous. Okay, so we see this role where Jesus talks um, and he says, but you... Um, Gave them a drink when I was thirsty. Um, you cared for them. So this is really Jesus' shepherd heart at play here. And he's um, expecting the guys that follows him, uh, his sheep, to have a shepherd's heart, to care for people, to love them, to feed them. When they're hungry, they feed. And it says when they're sick, they cared for him. When they were in prison, they visited him. So they, Jesus has got that, almost like one want to say, expectancy for us to carry that shepherd's heart of him. I want to say, guys, that Accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you've got the DNA of the shepherd in you. It's supposed to come naturally. But our flesh don't want to do the things that Jesus has called us to do. It comes naturally. Just love it. The Holy Spirit says that I will remind you of what Jesus said and what Jesus did. So when we find ourselves in situations, we will see your but he's, there's certain things, certain things that Jesus did and said that um, re resounds in my heart. And I want to follow Jesus. And the Holy Spirit reminds us of this. So when we go on, in this earth and we are on this planet and we are mixing with people, we are reminded that the Holy Spirit will say, Hey, look at this. Follow me here. Do this. And we can know that the shepherd would lead us in this area. So the role shifted. Now we are the shepherds on this earth. But we see... That um, in the scripture, Jesus is talking about caring, loving, and helping. But shepherds also lead people. Shepherds lead people. They don't only care and then leave. He leads the sheep in a certain direction. It's interesting that, that uh, Jesus doesn't go behind and he, and he drives the sheep with rocks. He goes in front and they listen to his voice and he leads them. But Jesus has given some to be, an, to be shepherds on this earth. We need to shepherd people. So the question is, who leads who? And which shepherd is going to lead which flock? And this is where the, chi uh, the, the church is so important. This is where the church comes in. And the church isn't just some clever guy that said, all Christians must come to a building and worship. No. The church is a divine knitting together of Jesus. Jesus says that he will build his church. He will build his church. And Jesus appoints shepherds. In the, in the church. Quickly want to explain this to you guys that in a church, um, uh, in church leadership, you've got an office and you've got gifts. The office is your, your elders and your deacons. They are the ones that lead. You get a lead elder in this case, which is parents. He's appointed and anointed and called by God to lead this church in Uppington for a, for a space of time. And that is his responsibility. And he will stand accountable before God for, for the sheep. And so is it for all the churches all around the world. Every shepherd will stand before Jesus and Jesus is going to say, how did you leave my sheep? What a responsibility, but what a joy. So we've got this office of elders and deacons. In this case, we've got uh, Terence being the lead elder. He's got a team of elders and, we, and, uh, and he's leading the church as Jesus leads him. So I want to say that our leadership is not a, a triangle where, where Terence is suppressing and and, and he's, um, uh, he's untouchable. And we're not a democracy where the people leads the elders. But we're more like a, a triangle on its side where everyone is equal before God. Everyone's got gifts. God loves everyone just as much. But he calls a leader to lead the people in the direction that he wants them to go. And what is awesome about team, Terence got a team about him, uh, uh, with him that keeps him accountable. We're talking scriptures. We're bringing guys in. To, to evaluate the church, 
So we are not this, this isolated church that can go into error. We've got guys coming in and, and checking us out and just hearing where's our heart and those kind of things. So that is good to know. But regarding with my, my preachers, the, 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 the gifts, everyone in the church, born again, has got certain gifts that God has placed in, into your heart. It just happens to be that the, the leader of the church is called a pastor or a shepherd or an, an elder. But Terence says, please don't call me pastor. And Lauren says, please don't call me prophet Lauren. <laughs> Pastors, apostles, teachers, those are not titles. They are gifts. And in Ephesians 4, Jesus says, these are the gifts that Christ gave to the church. It's not titles. So please, we don't want to be called pastors or bishops or prophets or teachers. We just, we're just um, normal guys, just like you. Jesus just has called us to lead people. I just want to encourage us with regarding eldership. Um, someone once quoted, it says that elders are over and under people, yet also among them, and they are ahead of them. So we're not this distant leadership away from the people. We are among the people. We are under the people to serve. We are over the people to protect. And we are in front of the people to lead. And it's, we have meal together. We have fun together. And what is so awesome about um, this leadership is we identify gifts. And we say, man, I see this gift in you. And we start to develop that gift. And we start to walk a road with people. And we say, We've, Jesus got a plan and a purpose for you. Let's work on this thing. And often with a gift, we need to work a little bit on character as well. But because character sustains the gift. It doesn't help. I'm such a good um, teacher or preacher, but I'm, but I'm actually a liar. Or I'm a thief. And that will infiltrate into the church. No, no, no. We need to come back to character. Let's sort character out. And that is what shepherd does. They lead the sheep. They help the sheep. They feed the sheep. And often when we touch in areas, the sheep would say, you Pharisee, who are you to, t- to, to talk in this area in my life? So no, we are gently helping the people and bringing them through. I just want to read this for us and then I'll pray. It's Dudley Daniel. And he says, the central thrust of biblical leadership is shepherding. Shepherding is a trust that we have been given to care for those who belong to God. Herein lies the glory of a leader to faithfully tend to God's people and bring them into the fullness of His, of his plan for them. So lead, uh, shepherds lead people into the fullness that God has for them. My prayer is, if you sit, sit here with a shepherd's heart and you've got a, a love for people, and you want to lead people, work on that gift. Come to the elders and say, I want to walk with you guys. I want to be part of what you are doing and I want to, I want to plug in. And for those who feel like, I don't really want to lead people, I want to encourage us to continue to have a shepherd's heart for people. Jesus' heart was always people, people, people first. Jesus loved his people. And Jesus wants us to love his people. I just want to to read Psalm 23 as a prayer for us, as an encouragement. I think, I know we can can say it by heart, but this is just David's heart and he's saying, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to His name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Jesus, our shepherd, how we love you, Jesus. We read this psalm, Lord God. We're just just reminded of how you lead us every single day, Lord God. And when we fall, you pick us up. When we run for your kingdom, you are right beside us and you are joyful with us, Lord God. Jesus, if any area of our lives we've got a religious mindset where we think we cannot speak to Jesus when we want or do certain things that you've asked us to do, to sing and dance, Father, we break those religious minds in the name of Jesus, Lord. We know that Jesus is 
wants us to gaze um, on pasture lands that is full of grass and there's freedom. And Lord Jesus, I want to thank you that we can be close to you, close to your heart. We can listen to your voice. We can listen to your heartbeat, Lord Jesus. I pray that this will settle in our hearts, that finances and, and the world and our families are not our provider, not our shepherds, but Jesus is our shepherd. He's the one that will lead us and guide us and love us and care for us. And Father, the second area that I would like to pr pray into, Lord, may we never lose the heart of the shepherd, Lord God. May we never lose the shepherd's heart of loving and caring for people, Lord Jesus. May we have compassion for people, Lord Jesus. May our heart breaks for what breaks your heart, Lord Jesus. And you say to Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, Lord, I love you. And you say, then feed my, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. And we, and we that, that uh, want to lead people, Lord God, and it's got a, a love for your people and that, that wants to pass the people and want to care for them, Lord Jesus. Give us the grace and the mercy and the, and the, and the anointing, Lord Jesus, to lead people closer to you. Jesus, as a church, we declare that we love you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We worship you. We honor you, Jesus. You are the love of our lives, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name.